In tonight's pre-election segment, we turn to the race for a state representative in the 9th Suffolk District, including parts of the South End, the Fenway, Back Bay, and Roxbury, the districts currently represented by Byron Rushing. Our guest is one of the challengers in the Democratic primary on September 4th. We'd like to welcome John Santiago. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, John. Happy to be here, Chris. Uh, you have an unusual um, biography. I mean, I mean you're, you're from here, you moved away, Peace Corps, Army Reserves, and, and you work in the emergency room as a doctor. At That's right. Well, it's always been about service for me. You know, I, uh, I was born in Puerto Rico. I spent a number of years growing up in Roxbury, um, Ruthven Street, and I think that experience alone really um, informed the rest of my life. You know, we grew up in your typical uh, impoverished setting, subsidized housing. Um, we were exposed to gun violence. I had an uncle become infected with HIV AIDS who ultimately passed. And that's what really set me on a path to healthcare. And one that I've really never let go of. I went abroad for a number of years, about five. I was a Peace Corps volunteer, spent some time working in Africa, implementing public health interventions. I thought I was gonna be an international doctor for many years. I learned several languages. But ultimately, my last year living in France, I decided I wanna come back home. I wanted to come back to Boston and serve the community here. And I got my dream job at Boston Medical Center, um, where I get to treat patients who live in the district and patients who are suffering from diseases I think can be controlled. Uh, this is one more district in Boston where the incumbent rep is widely considered progressive. People are saying, well, how, how, how are you different from that? So, I, you know, it's not really a race against Mr. Rushing. It's a race for the district. I think if you were to knock on doors in the district, you would come across a whole bunch of unhappy residents with what's going on. And so my race isn't against Mr. Rushing, it's for the community. And over the course of Mr. Rushing's almost 40 years in office, I would argue that the district has changed quite a bit. And so it has its issues. And I think it's time to elect someone who reflects that change and someone who's ready to deal with the current issues. So you can't knock on a door in the South End or parts of Roxbury without coming across the word opioid. And how that's not affecting the people suffering from it. I mean, I can't, I can't work a shift without seeing a patient um, under the throes of sort of substance. And, but it's not only the patients who are dying, which I would argue this is the public health crisis of our generation, it's the significant quality of life issues that we're seeing in the neighborhood. Well, it's not so much about people in the district ending up on opioids, it's, it's that people on opioids end up in the district. So what do you do about that? I would say that? both. Yeah, yeah. I would say, you know, there is a significant part of the um, people receiving services who are not from the district, but, um, you know, there are people in the district who are also, um, you know, who need care. I mean, this district extends from one Dalton, the big skyscraper going up, all the way to the poorest parts of Lower, Lower Roxbury. And if I told you the life expectancy decreased by 30 years from one end to the other, um, I think many people would be shocked. And so this campaign is really dedicated to addressing the social determinants of health. And so when it comes to opioids, I think that the person representing the 9th Suffolk District really needs to be the leader on that. And what we have, unfortunately, is a Democratic Party, super majorities in the House and in the Senate that have largely ceded their... Um, their role in this to the governor, who I know I applaud him for working on it, but I think we should be leading on it. And I think the person representing the ninth Suffolk should be leading on it. And that's what I plan to do. You, you want something more like Medicare for all in the first place. What would that do about the opioid crisis? So I think for, for, with respect to the opioid issue, I think, I mean, I think they're definitely related, but I think we need to really expand medication assisted treatment. Um, I think my insight as an emergency medicine doctor on the ground really will provide some added input in the state house. My concern is people have been in state house for so long, so many years, sitting around the same um, chairs and tables that they forget what's going on on the ground. I'll give you an example. So my first year at uh, Boston Medical Center, I was working, and there was this great intervention called the prescription monitoring program. The idea is, if you come in with back pain, Chris, and you say the Advil and the Tylenol isn't working, and you say I need some harder stuff, some Percocets or something like that, some opioid. We know that opioids or narcotics often lead to IV drug use. That's, that's often, often a trend that we see. So this idea was the prescription monitoring program would be used to identify people who were at risk. And so I could theoretically look you up and you know, see that you had 50 different prescriptions from 50 different people. That would raise a red flag. So me, as being a naive first year doctor, I went to go on the, the website and I couldn't find you. I couldn't even access the website. And so I realized that the only person who could access the website was the attending doctor. When we know that the residents at all the hospitals in Boston and across the state do all the work, so it didn't make any public health sense or any common sense that residents couldn't access the system. And I thought that was a lack of insight from our government officials. And so what I did is I worked with other doctors. I worked with um, people in the media. We met with the Globe a couple of times. We met with Governor Baker's people themselves, and we changed the law fairly rapidly. 
In Massachusetts, we, we have near universal access to health care coverage, yeah. but we have this enormous disparity in outcomes. So what would you do to change that? Well, I, I think, you know, I'm a proponent of Medicare for all. I think in my experiences, not only as a physician, but as someone who lived abroad, I've lived in Canada, I've lived in France, I've seen what we can do as a country. And I think we deserve more. And so a, a big part of this campaign is saying that, hey, residents in the district, patients in the district who also live there, that you deserve more. Um, the outcomes are better over there. Um, it's less expensive. Uh, but what are we doing here? I mean, I think we're largely, you know, at the, you know, at, at, at it's, it's insurance companies who's pretty much running the, the show here. And I think we need to stand up for the patients um, that I'm treating. Another thing that uh, needs to be fixed, I guess, is state funding for the schools, the House of Representatives. Absolutely. They, they tried to do something. It didn't work. Uh, so what do you see yourself doing differently? Yes. Yeah, so so my, my concern is that, uh, you know, you mentioned that Re representing Ru Rushing is a progressive leader, and he has. I have tremendous respect for him, and he's a good man. He's been good to me personally. But my fear is that what's going on in the State House right now, particularly in the House of Representatives, is not practicing the progressive politics that the Ninth Suffolk deserves. So with respect to education, you have... Or, or the Environment or Safe Communities Act, you have a Senate that's aggressively moved on a whole host of progressive issues where it's gone to the House and died. And so as a state legislator, I'm going to be advocating um, for, you know, things, you know, the fact that we're underfunding schools one to two billion per year. We deserve better than that. You know, our children deserve better than that. And that's why I'm running for office. This is BNN News, and we're talking with John Santiago, candidate for state representative in the 9th Suffolk District. Uh, John, you mentioned uh, the, the additional uh, protections for immigrants in the Safe Communities Act. Uh, the Senate passed something. Uh, now, the story I hear from the House is that ev even if they could have passed it, it wouldn't have been veto-proof. The governor would have killed sure. it. So what, what would have been the point of pushing? Well, well the, the bottom line is that the House didn't pass it. And they, they, they refuse to, to do something. I mean, you have a supermajority of Democrats in the House. I mean, I'm not so sure. That's veto proof from Governor Baker's veto. So I'm not sure where the, where the concern was. I mean, I think it was just lacking some political courage at a time of need when we need to stand up for immigrants as opposed to backing down. And you had the Senate, again, passing and pushing all this progressive legislation only to go to the House and, you know, not go anywhere. This district is also uh, at least close to where people were living in storage compartments on Mass Ave. Uh, what do you see about the, the re response to those housing needs? Well, I, I mean, I, th I think the housing needs in the South End, Laurel Roxbury, they run the spectrum. I mean, you'll talk to residents who've been there for 50, 60 years, residents who've created parts of the South End and Roxbury who can no longer afford the taxes to live there. So it's about, you know, helping people who are property rich and income poor, whether it's through tax relief or some sort of innovative program. But it's also about providing, ha providing housing. I think you have a whole bunch of developers coming to the South End and who are um, deciding either to push the affordable housing outside the area or to deeper parts of Dorchester, Mattapan, when I think that fleets exacerbating the, you know, the, the uh, disparities in housing, particularly in the district. And so I think as a state representative, I would be an advocate for those folks um, to, to make sure that we have affordable housing in the South and that we have proper tax relief for people who've been living there for a long time. Because sure, they could sell their house, make a couple million, you know, live in the suburbs, but they lose out from being part of the South End that they helped create. You're also talking about uh, responses to climate change uh, in your campaign. Uh, uh, why, are that, why is that so important to this? Well, district? it's so important because of where we live. I mean, you know, we're a stone throw away from the ocean. I mean, we saw what happened just this past winter. And again, you have an opportunity where the, the Senate passed an omnibus energy bill, very aggressive with respect to, to you know, uh, carbon pricing or um, uh, the RPS up to 3%. And it's gone to the House and they passed a watered down bill. I mean, what the Ninth Suffolk needs right now is a, is a progressive leader. And I've been endorsed by Progressive uh, Mass, I'm one of the leading progressive organizations in the community. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the state, and uh, we plan to be aggressive when it comes to the environment, to housing, and particularly on the opioid epidemic, which I think we have a lack of leadership um, in the House. I, I know the district could be vulnerable if you have a big enough storm and a big enough tide, but, but what about the, the public health uh, angle? Do you see something in that as well as far as climate change? Absolutely. I mean, you know, why I see ultimately people in the emergency department is because the community and the government has failed to take care of them. I mean, the emergency department is really a lens into the community, and why people ultimately end up there, it's because whether it's the sexism, racism, the lack of housing, the lack of economic insecurity, what's going on in our environment isn't being addressed. And so I look at this campaign as really dedicated to investing in the proper resources to, to make sure those social determinants are taken care of so they won't you know, uh, end up in some sort of you know, exacerbated um, health crisis. Thank you very much for being with us. My pleasure. John Santiago, candidate for state representative in the 9th Suffolk District. In a moment, a new approach to breaking the cycle of poverty, but first, his message.